Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of New Star Soccer 5. I'm feeling a little bit better this time. Um, yeah, the last episode wasn't too great and the like versus dislike bar showed that as well. So yeah, I have to apologize for that basically. We're going to, to play today anyway. We're going to make it good. Yeah, we're going to do some great stuff. We're going to talk some, about some stuff as well. Uh, I actually have at least one real subject today. Yeah, I don't know if any one of you... Oh, I'm actually banned. Okay, let's skip the game then. <laughs> okay, we won anyway. That's good. Uh, Semi-final. Yes. Okay, I didn't know. I... Well, I wanted to play. <laughs> I can play this game as well. Or at least. So let's do that. But yeah. Um, the first thing I want to talk about today is... I don't know if you've heard about an artist named Rodriguez. Uh, he was featured in a documentary called Searching for Sugar Man. A really, really good documentary by a Swedish, uh, what do you call it, documentary filmer named, what's his Malik? Malik Benjelul. It's not really, you know, the most Swedish name, but he has some Swedish, what do you call it, family at least. Yeah, some, some Swedish, I don't know, maybe it's half Swedish and half from somewhere else basically. Anyway, that documentary was great. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. It's about him and his career and how he thought that he was basically forgotten about around the world. But then he found out that his music was really, really big in South Africa. And yeah, he basically went there on a tour and find, found out that, you know, things weren't as bad as he thought. Or I mean, he was huge there, but they didn't know who he was. They didn't know that he was alive and all that. So that's basically the story, yeah, about his career and, and how he found out that he was huge in South Africa, basically. And yeah, and that documentary won an Oscar for the best documentary and Malek, no, sorry, Malek won the, yeah, he basically won, won the statuette. So yeah, it was kind of one of the best Swedish documentaries in a long time. Rodriguez himself is from Detroit in, you know, USA, so yeah. It's basically not a Swedish documentary in that way, but yeah, it's made by Sweden, at least. Yeah, and basically, two days ago, uh, he committed suicide, which is kind of sad, especially, I mean, as proud as Swedes are. I mean, for the first time in, I don't know how many years, a Swede won something, won an Oscar statuette, and he won other, you know, prizes as well. Yeah! He won a BAFTA, I think that's the um, British, what do you call it, the British Oscars basically. And yeah, he won a, a lot of, of prizes around the world for that documentary. And yeah, then he, he went and killed himself because he was depressed. Um, so, I don't know what to, to say really, it's just a sad story really. Yeah! Not, you know, not only because he was Swedish and we are proud of Swedes who are doing great things, but also because he seemed to be a really, really good movie maker. I mean, it was his debut, what do you call it, debut documentary and he was working on another documentary as well, so, I mean, he had something. Yeah! It's kind of sad, you know, when someone dies. He was only 36, so, yeah. Let's, let's not have a silent minute because it's just silly to have that in a minute in a video, but maybe we can think a little bit about it anyway. Um, yeah, it's kind of kind of sad. I mean, he decided to, to jump in front of a subway train and I mean, it's kind of horrible, a horrible way to do it as well. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, he's not the first Swedish, what do you call it? sort of famous people. I mean, he's not really, really famous, but he, he, he had some fame at least. I would recognize him if I, if I saw him on the street. Um, but he's not the first one, you know, famous Swede who decides to jump in front of a subway train. Uh, actually, a old Swedish troubadour, or not really troubadour, but an artist who was making great songs, um, decided to do the same, basically. Yeah. And both were on the blue line as well, so I don't know if they Nah, I mean, just silly to, to compare those situations. Um, how, how the fuck did I score seven goals? I don't know. <laughs> but um, it's sad. And I mean, if you haven't watched the documentary Searching for Sugar Man, go ahead and do it. It's absolutely worth it. Um, yeah! No matter if you pay for it or download it, 
it's worth your time, it's worth the money as well. And yeah, I really do recommend it. It's, it's kind of sad, you know, when you, when you have someone that you like, you know, you like what he's doing, and then all of a sudden he just disappears. It's, yeah, it's, it's not good, man. No, but seriously, it's, oh, 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 shit. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it doesn't upset people. It's kind of sad that he didn't get help, though, that he decided to, to, to be so harsh, I guess you call it. I, I don't know if it's the correct word, but it's a word, at least. Um, yeah, and I mean, I've heard similar things on YouTube with some guy, I don't remember his name, but he was, he was appreciated. A lot of big YouTubers knew about him. And it was basically, he liked Nintendo games a lot, and he made videos about them. Um, and he decided to commit suicide as well. And that really, really had, you know, many YouTubers upset. Not upset in an angry way, but in a sad way. Um, so it's kind of sad when it happens. And, and they were talking about, you know, if you're having any troubles in your life, if you're feeling down and if you feel like you know it's not life is not worth living then then get help and I guess this is a, a similar situation uh, he had basically his entire life in front of him um, and a, a great career I mean if you win an Oscar statuette then I guess you wouldn't <laughs> basically wouldn't have any ha any troubles finding you know money to make other videos <coughs> or investors uh, so he could basically do whatever he wanted to uh, when it co comes to movies at least and he decided to to end his own life and that's sad it is yeah um but i mean shit happens maybe you can say mm, it's kind of sad his family said though that to the media that you know leave us alone we don't want to, to talk to you right now we want to handle this alone basically and i mean god damn what a shock it would be if someone that you knew you know just decide to take his own life all of a sudden I mean, no. It's kind of unthinkable, really. Yeah. What if I did it? Would you be sad then? Yeah! There's nothing to joke about, though, so I'm not going to, to talk about that. Um, but yeah, I just want to, to get it out there, talk a little bit about it. He was... I don't know if he was... I don't know how he was as a person, but... Um, the guy in the documentary, you know, who found out that he was big in South Africa, Sixto Rodriguez, I think his entire name is, or his full name, um, he said that, you know, he was a really sensitive person, but he, he had a lot to, to thank him for. Basically, that documentary made him known in the USA as well, and he went to play from audience, you know, an audience, about 200 people big, he went to, to play in arenas with 10,000 people in the audience, so he was very, very grateful towards Malek and, and the documentary, so yeah. Okay, um, let's see. Have I scored? I score basically almost six games per game, or six goals per game in, in you know, in the league. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, let's move on. Um, but it's, it's a sad, sad thing. I want to just talk a little bit about it and make you aware of the documentary. If you haven't seen it, um, see it. It's, it's absolutely worth it. I recommend it. Yeah. And it's kind of the same. I mean, if you have your favorite band and they're like, nah, we're, we're splitting up. This ain't working anymore. We're done. Imagine, I mean, you, you wouldn't feel too great then either. Um, but I mean, someone killing himself. It's kind of worse, actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, check it out. I, I recommend it. Hmm. And if you don't like it, I mean, I can't give you your time back, but... Yeah. It's still there. It's still there. Uh, so, except for that, what's going on? I mean, I've been looking at some university studies for the autumn. I actually um, applied for a lot of game writing courses or sort of game programming designing slash writing that stuff um, this autumn and I'm, I'm feeling oh that's a nice name the best name ever I'm the invisible horse I'm the invisible horse okay he's, he's clearly visible though you can see him there <laughs> yeah but um, I have applied for basically the one I want to to you know I want to get into the most is game writing slash design at the um, 
school, what do you call it? Not university, but sort of uh, college, I guess. But it's still like a university, but you know, it doesn't have the status of a university, but it's close enough. And in Skövde, yeah, so maybe I'm moving far away from home. I don't know. I want to get in there. I want to, I like to write. I like to be creative. I like video games. It seems like if there's anything that I really, really would want to do with my life, uh, it's basically, you know, yeah, basically it would be uh, making games, but I suck when it comes to, to programming and I suck when it comes to, you know, graphics, making graphics and that stuff and art. So basically writing, that's my way out, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, uh, let's play the next game. We're going to play against Bayern Munich. That's good. We're going to kick their asses. Arr. Is this the Champions League again? I can't remember actually. Or some sort of a cup at least. Well, it doesn't really matter too much. We're going to win anyway. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We, we won with 8-0 the first game. So, I guess... <laughs> I guess we don't have to worry too much basically. There we go. 9-0. Great. Woohoo. Yeah! And, yeah. And basically, I'm a little bit... What do you say? Nervous. Because my grades... They're good, but they're not great. And it's basically on the border to, to, to make it in to that kind of program. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll have to, to wait nervously for a couple of weeks now. And then hopefully I will be able to say in a video, I'm going to win. Yeah. I'm going to yeah, make games and write, write, you know, scripts for games. And I'm going to keep on making YouTube videos because that's great. Hopefully I can say that, and hopefully I can say it with, you know, a deep voice as well, to sound a little bit more manly. Um, yeah. But, I mean, I always hope for the best. And uh, when it comes to, to applications in Sweden, it's kind of different, especially I have a lot of English viewers. I Actually, when I was younger, I looked at some English universities. Um, and then it's more like, you know, you have your grades, then you need a statement for from some old teacher. Then you need to make a personal statement as well, and, da -da -da, and you need to basically argue why they should take you, uh, or you know, let you study at their university, which is kind of weird in a way, because I mean, it, yeah, it's it's too grey in, in some ways. In Sweden, it's like you have your grades, fuck the rest. <laughs> if your grades are good enough, then you're in, baby. Unless you know, it's it's basically if you want to become a doctor. Um, yeah. yeah, to become a doctor you need to have basically all of the highest grades and still there are more people who want to, to study it than there are places with highest grades. Uh, so then they have some random, um, I mean some random, they just pick some random names, aha you're in! And then they have some interviews as well. Um, and I mean it's kind of different if, if it comes to sort of dancing or some music universities and that stuff, then you have basically um, auditions yeah! but I mean in a normal course it's like yeah you have to have read English course C ABC and then you know some um, Swedish A and B and mathematics A B and C and if you read all those and if you have the grades then you're fucking welcome there's no way around it you can't pay your way in basically yeah! And that's the other thing, it's entirely free, so I mean, uh, if you're poor, I mean in England you have to pay a fee each year, which is goddamn silly. In Sweden it's it's free if you're a member of the European Union at least. Um, or if you live, I mean if you have a passport from a member within the European Union, then you can come here and study for free, yay! And the Swedish government will pay you, yay! And they will lend you money as well, yay! With you know, you don't have to pay as much yeah! as as other loans. Other loans, it's like yeah, you have a lot of I mean interest. It's called cool. yeah, you have to pay it back. Um, but basically, the interest on the you know loans from the government for you to study, they're really low, so it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I kind of approve of the Swedish school system, even though the schools might not be the best in the world. Um, it's free and fair for, for most people, as long as they actually study. 
as long as they get, get the grades basically yeah then they are welcome basically more or less yeah so that's that's good um but yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to it it feels like this is the way i want to go as you might know right now i'm studying linguistics and it doesn't really feel like it's my thing it's, i'm basically bored of it i mean sure i like language but i i i'm more for the creative parts of the language rather than the um you know scientific parts i guess yeah! I want to use language, I don't want to learn about language. That's what I've realized basically. Um, so yeah, but I mean, we're beating by Munich's ass here. Well, that's great. <laughs> Fantastic, yes indeed. Mm. And also, if you like if you like my football manager video, um, tonight or yesterday, I don't know when this video will go up, but I recorded another hour basically of football manager. And I'm going to upload it, or it's uploaded. But I'm going to publish it tonight, uh, tonight Thursday. The is it the fifteenth? Yeah, it should be the fifteenth. Um, yeah, so you can watch some more football manager basically. And I had a player in that video named White Cola. He was from Zambia, I guess, in Africa, and he basically sucks balls. He's not a good player in the game, but he always, you know, score goals. Um, he he does he, he do what I want him to basically score goals he scores important goals basically and that's why I haven't get rid of him yet because he sucks but he's still good yeah and in one game he has scored the most magical goal ever I mean Slatan couldn't do that it's like 30 meters away or 25 no uh, at least 20 meters away it's like a sort of a bicycle kick over his own head like smack in the goal it was a really really hard shot I don't really know how to explain it in English but it was just magical <laughs> I loved it yeah! so yeah if you get the chance to, to check that video out do it it's 90 or 60 minutes basically almost of me talking shit and playing football manager 14 yeah it's it's really fun actually. I mean it's it's a fun game. It's addicting as I said as well earlier. <laughs> yeah. Um but mm, I mean yeah. Check it out. Check it out. Do do or however that song goes, I don't know. Steve Brule uh, for your health. Yeah. But um Check it out. It's it's a good song. Um, or song? No, it's a good it's a good video. I think it's kind of quiet though. It's just me talking. I don't have any audio in that game. Basically, there's no audio in that game anyway. So, yeah. Okay, we're going to play against FC Nuremberg. Let's kick some ass. Yeah. And hopefully you will enjoy it. Yeah. And basically, I'm getting closer and closer to a thousand subscribers. I'm up to 860 right now, which feels really really good. Um really really good actually I, I enjoy I enjoy playing video games on YouTube and people obviously enjoy to watch them yeah and yeah and, uh, basically what I'm wondering as well is what do you think about yeah! uh, the Sims 2 because I'm not getting a shit ton of views in those videos but I still enjoy playing them um, but I want to sort of know what you think of them yeah that's what I want to know <laughs> um, because I mean I don't know if I if I'm going to keep moving them for keep moving keep making them uh, for much longer if I'm going to move on to The Sims 3 I had the perfect plan to, to sort of play some The Sims 1 as I did and then move on to The Sims 2 as I also did and then after a while move on to The Sims 3 and then this autumn it's planned at least that The Sims 4 are going to be released or it's it is going to be released I really need to, to learn grammatics better yeah yeah um, so it's going to be released this autumn and I think that I want to jump into it I want to, to play it playing The Sims 4 yes that'd be kind of awesome actually I think at least um, yeah it's gotta be awesome I mean I've seen some videos from it or you know some early footage basically looks the same as The Sims 3 in many ways um, but hopefully I mean hopefully 
it's not the graphics that matters the most. Hopefully, there is it, it will be a little bit more user friendly. That you, the thing that I missed the most is basically dynamic uh, neighborhoods. In The Sims 3, I mean, you have neighborhoods, but I haven't seen anyone. And maybe, maybe they added that in the expansions or, or something. Um, but I haven't seen people, you know, build new houses, maybe old houses getting teared down. Um, so that's basically what I want to, to see in the fourth game. I mean, I want to move into a new neighborhood, maybe not so many houses are built, and then new houses are popping up, random houses with random sims in them, just moving in. And you know, you, you just. Oh! Oh, he saved that one actually. Yeah, but th that's what I want to see. You know, more dynamic neighborhoods. And yeah, that would be awesome. It would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And I want to see a game without a thousand expansions pack as well. <laughs> I'm thinking of, you know, when I start playing The Sims 4. I, I, I thought about this a long time ago. The first episode is going to be called Thriller in Vanilla. Yeah, it's basically I'm going to start off by playing the game without any goddamn expansions packs at all. And then, <laughs> yeah, then I, you know, when I feel like it or when, if I earn enough on the videos to actually, you know, start um, buying expansions packs, then I'll do that and move on to new expansions packs and that stuff. Um, so that's basically my plan for this autumn. Also, I am going to play Binding of Isaac Rebirth a lot. Yeah. Um, because hopefully people will enjoy that game. I mean, it seems to be a good game. It seems to be, once again, more dynamic than the first Binding of Isaac. Um, they have, you know, much more possibilities to, to make great stuff with this new game. And it's also coming out sometime this year. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully I will basically be able to play that as well. I mean, I won't be able to challenge, you know, Bisnap and, and Northern Lion when it comes to views, but hopefully I'll, I'll get some new subscribers of it. Um, because that's what YouTube is all about, views and subscribers, basically. <laughs> and having fun while making videos, but that's kind of automatic for me, at least, yeah. Oh, nice, yeah. Whew. Yeah! Yeah. And I also, I'm thinking of making, you know, some channel highlights and that stuff. I don't know how that would work though, but maybe, maybe I'll contact some silly person and be like, hey, so can you animate this for me? Or maybe I'll just be like, make some highlights without animations. Um, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Yes. <laughs> I can only hope for the best. Indeed. Um, but yeah. Ronk, a ronk, a ronk, a ronk. Oh shit! God damn it! Yeah, I mean, if you know someone who who is working with animations, or who is you know, kind of want to do it, um, then tell me. Feel free. I, I I want to, yeah, I want to get in contact with someone to make you know some sort of some more short videos um with highlights to basically give people a short laugh, maybe they haven't seen that specific video before, maybe they don't remember it, maybe they do remember it and want to see a highlight of it, then you can tell me as well. And I don't know, maybe I'm too small to do that stuff though, but I mean, yeah, it's basically what you make it, basically. <laughs> uh, things are what you make them, that's what I'm trying to say. So if I want to make highlight videos, I mean, I can have one subscriber and be like, yeah, I want to make a highlight video, and I can do that. I mean, if you pay someone for the work, maybe you get, I don't know, maybe 50 euros, 20, 30, 40 euros um, to make a, a video, animated video, um, then, yeah, why not? A little, little bit of cost, I mean, there's worse things to spend money on though, I mean, god damn it, 40 euros is like one night at the bar, I stay at home, play video games instead. Um, and then I'll save that money. <laughs> so yeah, drink less, pay more for animations, indeed. That's my future, I don't think so though, but it might might be, I don't know. Guess we'll see, yeah. But this episode felt a lot better than the last one anyway. Hopefully you enjoyed to watch it, hopefully I'll see you all around the next time. And yeah, as I said, if you want to see any highlights, give me examples of what you liked 
what you what you liked earlier to to see on my channel or if you know someone who is doing animations you can tell me about him or her as well yep but anyway hopefully i'll see you all around the next time leave a like if you want to and goodbye